So what is the purpose of the Sewing Doc Academy? Hi, my name is Andy Barney and I'm a 15 year service technician and I'm passing on my skills to those that want to learn the art and skill of sewing machine service. This is part of my Ask Andy series with the Sewing Doc Academy where I do teach those skills. I like to address our most frequently asked questions about sewing machines and really the sewing machine industry in general. So today we're talking about what are what's the purpose of the Sewing Doc Academy? Um, the Sewing Doc Academy is actually an extension of what was my service shop. I had a service shop for 15 years and I just closed it in the fall of 2022 so that I could focus solely on teaching as I couldn't do both anymore. Hardest decision I ever had to make was to close my shop. We built a beautiful community with amazing customers and a lot of friends and it was very, very hard to leave that part behind. But this is really our calling. This is really my passion and it is a privilege and an honor to be able to pass on my skills to those that want them. Now, we have three main goals um, as part of the Sewing Doc Academy. Number one, we want to make uh, anybody that uses their sewing machine that wants to be far more self-sufficient in troubleshooting its issues, keeping it maintained, and solving minor issues, the more self-sufficient you are in 2023, the better. Part of this is because we have a severe lack of technicians and service shops. Some of people are, are driving hours each way to get to a service shop. There's nothing more frustrating than thinking your machine is truly broken because you can't get it to sew right. It's thread nesting, breaking threads, skipping stitches, what have you. To drive three hours to find out, it might have been a minor issue that you could have solved yourself with the right knowledge or right guidance. But even bigger than that, even if you're just taking your machine in for routine service, which you should be doing every 12 or 18 months, most of us are not doing that because one, nobody likes the idea of sewing machine service. Nobody wants to drive to a server shop, whether it's 30 minutes across town or three hours from you to drop off your beloved sewing machine, leave it there for six weeks, and then go pick it up, pick it up again and hope that it's working better than when you took it in. That is not what anybody wants to spend their time doing. So I understand why we don't do it. Number two, people don't like to spend the money on it. It used to be that you could get your machine service for $60, $80. Now that's impossible. I think that there's very few shops left where you can get a machine service on any type of machine for less than $99. If you have more than one sewing machine, that it could be three, four, five hundred dollars a year if you're treating your sewing machine like you're supposed to. So instead we choose to offer you to make one investment that you can learn on an infinite number of machines so that you're not having to take your machine in for routine service and you're not neglecting it. That's the biggest thing. I know that Meat is more expensive. Produce is extremely expensive. I don't even want to talk about gas right now. We're all feeling the strain of this economy. They say it's getting better. I don't know. I personally don't feel it down here getting any better, and I know you don't either. So if we're not taking our sewing machines into having them routinely serviced, we're degrading the functionality and the longevity of that sewing machine every time that we neglect service. So I'm really worried about folks neglecting their sewing machine year after year after year because of time and money constraints, and then eventually having to face replacing that sewing machine. I, ex I especially have older customers that are 65 plus that are saying, this needs to be my last sewing machine. I do not want to buy another two or $3,000 sewing machine in my life. Time. So if you want that sewing machine to last, you do need to at least be um, have the proficiency to get into it and clean it properly. Now, I did another video on, on um, self-servicing sewing machines. If you're just taking the needle plate off, taking out the bobbin case, cleaning out the lint, putting some oil in there, you are not at all servicing your sewing machine. You are doing between service maintenance. So that's the main reason. That's num goal number um, one is self-sufficiency, and that is because we want to make as many people... Uh, able to service their machine themselves without having to take it into the machine to the service shop every single time. Goal number two is to replenish the number of available technicians out in the world. I don't really know how to word this because I hesitate to use the word technician um, because I don't think this looks like what most people think. This does not mean that we're training every single person that comes into our program to open a full-blown service shop. That's not really our goal. If you want to do that, we will help you get there as best as we can. But for the majority of you, we're not going to tell you take on that expensive overhead, hire people, rent a space, you know, put your neck on the line. That's probably not what the majority of you are going to do. 
But what I think happens, and I do cover this in another video, is that most people come into our program at first thinking, I would just really like to maintain the three machines that I have so I don't have to deal with the hassle of it every year. And then they get into the program and they do it and they like it. Maybe not enough to do it full time, but they like it. There is definitely a level of satisfaction in um, cleaning machines and maintaining them. And then sometimes word gets out and your neighbor who's elderly, who doesn't like to haul her machine into the shop either, may say, well, would you mind taking a look at my machine? And in our program, because we give you lifetime access and access to human beings that will actually help you, you can, through our help, help your neighbor. I'm not asking you to take our skills and teach or how to do it, but you can offer your services, whether it's on a volunteer basis or a small fee, or you can get paid in cookies like we used to sometimes. Um, that person may be grateful that you're able to take a look at her machine, clean it out, lubricate it, keep the boards clean, put it all back together, and keep her machine happily running. If you belong to a quilt guild, you're going to have a million opportunities. You can choose to volunteer your services with those folks. You can charge a small fee. Um, as soon as word gets out, word will spread. So your contribution to your community is not all, is not necessarily going to be a full-blown business unless you want it to be, but you can volunteer for maker spaces. You can volunteer to, for your local library loan out program. You can go to um, senior centers. Those machines have to be maintained. There's a million and one ways that you can contribute with your newfound skills to your community. And that's what we mean by putting more capable people out into the world. And then goal number three, as we clear all those other two goals, is that we really want to be able to provide an income path for people who have a lot of hurdles or challenges in their way. From a personal standpoint, I do work a lot in the social justice realm and recidivism and things with people coming out of incarceration. I have a history with that, so I do know what it's like to come out and have to build your own thing or find an income and not have it ripped out from under you because of red tape or bureaucracy or just discrimination in general. So we do work a lot and do plan to build programs specifically for people coming out of incarceration into the real world. But beyond that, we're also discovering that our program is a really good fit for people that have um, both mental and physical disabilities. So we have a few people that are on the autism spectrum that have found great relief in being able to focus on doing specific skills they're really good at. We have a lot of people with social anxiety that are building their skills back here because because other than being in contact with us, there's not a lot of social aspect to this. If those people would like to build a business, you could easily hire someone to handle your front end to take in machines for you, and you can just be in the back doing your thing and focusing on what you need. We have people with physical disabilities that can make this work where they couldn't in a traditional workplace. So we want to be able to provide possible income paths for people that really have a difficult time providing for themselves and keep making sure it stays secure and not being ripped out from under them. So those are the three main goals of the Sewing Doc Academy. We have really built this whole thing from the heart. Everything we've done has been in an effort to give back to our community, and we appreciate everybody that has contributed us along the way and that join our programs. If you have any questions at all about this topic or want to discuss it further, please message us, leave comments below, if and, and look at the uh, description for any other videos, and we would be happy to discuss them with you.